All right, can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I want to try to do a demo. Um, before I go on. Let me see if I can zoom, have us zoom in on this device. Okay. Okay, what I have here is a capacitor, an electroscope, and this thing is called a Wimhurst generator. So it basically works by charging by induction. And what I'm going to do is, uh, by rotating this thing, I'm going to charge this capacitor. Okay, and look at how much charge is on here. And I'm gonna change the plate separation while it's still connected to the Wimhurst. Let's try this. It's not spinning very well, sorry. You notice that when I increase the plate separation, the Wimhurst, I mean the, the electroscope, Deflected, I think I lost some charge. Hold on, let me do some more. One of my computer monitors doesn't like this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the plate separation. Uh oh, something's weird's happening. Let me try one more time. Because this demo worked before I started class. Okay. I'm going to increase the plate separation. Why is it that the electroscope is deflecting more when I increase the plate separation? You, did you notice that? I increase the plate separation and the electroscope de deflects more. Why is that? I'm charging is this it thing. Charge? I'm sorry? They increase charge. Yeah, right. when I when I increase the plate separation on this, what happens to the capacitance? The capacitance yeah. decreases. Where does the charge go? It goes here. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then when I decrease this, so it kind of this this is telling me how much this is charged. Really, it's not telling me how much this is charged because when I decrease the plate separation, all the charge goes back to here. When I increase the plate separation, all the charge goes to the electroscope because the capacitance decreases. So this gives you an indication of how this thing gets charged. I've been trying for a long time trying to figure out a way to measure the charge on this thing. It's been, it's, with simple equipment, it's very difficult, but this is the best way to do it. 
So I decrease the plate separation. All the charge goes on here, none on there. I increase it. And notice the difference. Okay. When I did it earlier, this thing went like a quarter of the way down. But they were, at least they work a little bit. So you get to see that the capacitor is, uh, ha it does have charge on it, on it. Each plate has equal but opposite charge. The total charge is zero. What the plate's really doing is it's storing energy. Okay. All right, let me fix my, move my tables around. And I want to continue my discussion. Okay, so now really what I want to do is focus on something more practical. Uh, basically, uh, capacitors and circuits. Although, although these circuits that we're going to be looking at here are kind of boring because um, once the capacitors are charged, nothing else is going to happen. But this is at least a start in helping us to understand how capacitors work in, in circuits. Okay, so suppose I have two capacitors and I connect them together and I connect them in series. And by the way, the schematic symbol for a capacitor, one of the schematic symbols is just two vertical lines like that, okay? So I'm gonna basically use this one. So I'm connecting two capacitors in series, so I'm gonna connect them to a battery. Now I'm gonna use a schematic symbol for a battery. Or we can make that a power supply. So what happens when I connect this? This is positive, this is negative. Notice that this terminal of the battery is connected to this plate. This terminal is connected to this plate. The, the, the um, one of the plates from each capacitor is not connected to the battery, notice that, okay? So this positive one is connected to the first capacitor, the negative one's connected to the second capacitor. So what happens when I connect this? Electrons will go this way, leaving this side positively charged. On this side, the electrons will go this way, leaving this side negative charge. So if this guy gets plus Q, this guy gets minus Q, what happens to these two plates? Well, if a negative charge is on this plate, that's going to draw, it's going to push the electrons away from this plate, making this positively charged. With charge plus Q. Where do those electrons go? Well, they go to this plate. Does that make it a quadrupole, or does that not apply here? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, um, we're not going to apply that here. I mean, those are for um, single charges. I mean, they, we have a lot of charges here. I, I understand what you're trying to say. I mean, if I have four point charges like this, if, if these were four were point charges, then yeah, you would say you'd have a quadrupole. But that's these are charged plates. Okay. So there's a bunch of charges on them. Let's call, let's say this capacitor is a C1 and this is C2. What can we say about the charge on each one of these capacitors? 
In other words, if we compare these Qs, they're going to be the same. If we compare these Qs, they've got to be the same. I mean, if you think about it, when they made the connection here, and they made the connection here, this side got charged plus Q, this side got charged minus Q. And then minus Q and draws equal but opposite charge here. So the total charge, the charge on each one of the plates, the magnitude of the charge on each one of the plates is going to be the same. Okay. okay. The charge on any one of the capa capacitor plates is going to be the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so this is, a, this is the battery voltage, delta V. We can call it the battery or the source voltage, however you want to call it. What I want to do is replace those two capacitors with a single one that gives me the same charge on the capacitor. I want to replace those two with a single one. You can call it the equivalent or the, uh, you can call it the equivalent capacitance. And this thing will have the same charge as this one. And this one will have the, the, the battery, the power supply voltage. Okay, so. Wouldn't it need to be negative 2Q and positive Q2? Or. Actually, it'd be the same, right? Because it's on the left side, it's still the same positive Q. On the right side, it's still negative Q. Yeah, yeah. But the magnitude of Q, we want the magnitude of Q to be the same on the right-hand circuit as on the left-hand circuit. The, the charge delivered by the battery is the same as the charge on any one of these two. Because charge is conserved. If... If uh, one coulomb of electrons go from this plate to here, one coulomb of, of electrons go from this side to here. Okay? And these capacitors are said to be connected in series. What can we say about the delta V across this capacitor and the delta V across that capacitor? Well, we know that this potential here is the same as this potential here. And we know that this potential here is the same as this potential here. So that we know that delta V um, between these two points is the same. We know there's an electric field here, and so we know the, the V drops from here to here, and then the, the V drops from here to here again. So what that must mean then is the voltage drop of the first one across the first one plus the voltage drop across the second one has to be equal to the voltage drop across the battery. Now, we know that Q is C delta V. Let's just assume all the values are positive, so I don't have to put absolute value signs. Where Q is the charge on one of the plates. Delta V is Q over C. All the Qs are the same. So I can write my delta Vs in the following way. Delta V1 is... Q or C1, delta V2 is Q or C2. Let me put these up here. And remember, I, I said that I want to replace those two with a single equivalent capacitance. That gives me the same charge. The Q 
Q's cancel and I get 1 over C equivalent equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So the capacitors in series add as reciprocals. So to find out the equivalent capacitance, I got to take the reciprocal of the first capacitance plus the reciprocal of the second capacitance and then take the reciprocal of the sum. That's how capacitors add in series. And no matter whether I had two of these in series, three of these in series, ten of these in series, the result is the same. One over the equivalent capacitors is one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3, dot, dot, dot. And then you take the reciprocal of the whole thing. Okay? Questions on that? What about capacitors in parallel? So let me draw this circuit. I have two capacitors. They're connected in parallel. And you've wired something like this in the past. This is uh, C1. This is C2. This is delta V of supply. I want to replace those two with a single one. such that the battery delivers the same total charge. What do we know here? Well, if this is a, let's say this is at one volt, then these points are at one volt. If this is at zero volts, then this point's at zero volts, that point's at zero volts, that point's at zero volts. So that means the voltage drop across each capacitor is the same. Or the potential difference. They're the same and they're equal to the power supply voltage. Now, when charge, when charge, when these things get charged, the electrons flow through here. The electrons can take two different paths, right? Electrons can go this way or that way. And if these capacitor values are different and if their voltages are the same, then each capacitor is going to have different Q. So this one's going to have charge Q1. And this will have Q2. And what I mean by Q1 and Q2, that's the, that's the charge on each one of the plates. The magnitude of the charge on each one of the plates. The total charge delivered by the battery has got to be this plus this. The charge is capacitance times the potential difference across it. But I want to replace those two capacitors with a single one that gives, such that the, the charge delivered by the battery is the same. The delta V sub S is cancel and the equivalent capacitance is C1 plus C2. So when the capacitors are in parallel, the capacitance add up. So for capacitors in series, they add in reciprocal. For capacitors in parallel, the capacitances add up. Questions?
Let's use these ideas, these two ideas, to solve a problem. And what I'm going to do is let me make the let me blow up the next slide. Can you guys see the values on the circuit? Yeah. Okay, because I have one display, I have two screens, and one, on one of the screens, the display shows no numbers. Another, on, on, the, on the camera, I see, I see the numbers, which is very strange. Yeah, I see the slides on two different monitors. On one of the monitors, I don't see any numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit. I want to calculate the equivalent capacitance for that circuit using our knowledge of the equations for a series in parallel. So I'll let you think about that real quick. I'm, I'm going to write some equations on the board while you're thinking about it. I know you can't see the board. Give me a second. And to solve the circuit, well, to find the equivalent capacitance, I just need these two equations. And you got to do the problem one step at a time. Okay, you have to solve the problem one step at a time. So let's take a look at this circuit. And what you want to do in a problem like this is you want to reduce the circuit. Every time you can simplify a part of the circuit, you want to reduce it and redraw it. Take a look at that circuit. Do you see that the, how the two 10 microfarad capacitors are connected? How are they connected? They're in series. They're in series. Okay, so if they're in series, then I can use this equation to calculate the capacitance. So they're both 10 microfarads, right? One tenth plus one tenth is two tenths, right? So C series is five micros five microfarads. So I can take those two capacitors and replace it with an equivalent one. Whoops. That's five microfarads. Now what do you notice? There's the uh, parallel. The two fives, and they add, right? So I'm not going to go on the board to add 5 plus 5. Right? What's 5 plus 5? It's 10. So then I replace those two with a single one. That's 10 microfarads. And what do you say about the 2.5 and, and the 10? Series. They're in series. So i got to do 1 over 2.5. Plus 1 over 10. Okay, that one required a little bit of work, I guess. Just give me a second here. 
Okay, so one's two and a half and one's ten. But two and a half is five halves, right? Yeah. Okay, so... And so this will be two fifths. I get a common denominator of ten, so this two fifths becomes four tenths. Four tenths plus five tenths, I'm sorry, four tenths plus one tenths is five tenths. The reciprocal of five tenths is ten fifths. Ten fifths is two. So two microfarads. So I, I can replace all those capacitors with a single two microfarad capacitor. And the, the power supply will deliver the same amount of charge. Questions on that? Of course, I can figure out more stuff than that, right? Because I know it's connected to the battery, 10 volt power supply, or battery or power supply, whatever you want to call it. I can figure out how much charge is on that two microfarad capacitor, because charge is voltage times capacitance, 10 times two. What's 10 times two? 20. So I have 20 microcoulombs on that capacitor, but that capacitor replaced a 10 and a 2.5 volt, I'm sorry, 2.5 microfarad capacitor. Those capacitors are in series. So each one of those capacitors has 20 microcoulombs on it. I can figure out the voltage on each one of them. Because all I need to do, I'll go up on the board, I'll show you the equation in a second here. Is use this equation, delta V is Q or C. So if I have 20 microfarads, uh, microcoulombs, or 2.5 microfarads, that gives me 8 volts. There's 8 volts on the small capacitor, and how many, how many volts is on the, other, on the other capacitor? Well, the total has to be 10. If one is 8, how much is the other one? It's 2. The other way to figure it out, if you take 20 divided by 10, 20 microcoulombs divided by 10 microfarads, you get 2 volts. So there's 2 volts on the big capacitor and 8 volts on the smaller capacitor. But notice I'm, I'm, I'm look, going backwards with those figures that we drew. We drew. So when we find the equivalent capacitance, every time I can reduce the circuit, I redraw the picture. Once I got to the equivalent capacitance, now you work backwards. So those, that 10 microfarad capacitor replaced two 5 microfarad capacitors that were in series. Okay, so those... those Five microfarad capacitors, I'm sorry, they were in parallel. I didn't say, I, I said series, sorry about that. So those two five microfarad capacitors, let me go back. And that 10 microfarad, you see they're equivalent. The two five microfarad capacitors are in parallel. That means they have the same voltage across them. They both have two volts across them.
how much charges each one of them have? Five times two is ten. So each one of those two five microfarad capacitors has ten mi microcoulombs on it. Ten plus ten is twenty. So the total still is twenty microcoulombs, which makes sense. Now, that five microfarad capacitor on the right, which has ten microcoulombs on it, replaced two. 10 microfarad capacitors that were in series. That means each one of those capacitors will have the same charge on it. Each one of them will have 10 microcoulombs. And if we wanted to find the voltage on it, I just take charge over capacitance, 10 divided by 10, I get one. So each voltage, each one has one volt across it. The sum of those two voltages, one plus one, better be equal to the voltage across that five microfarad capacitor, which it is. Now, I pretty much know everything I needed to know about my circuit. I know my equivalent capacitance, I know the charge on every capacitor, and I know the voltage on every capacitor. There is one more thing I can calculate it, but I haven't covered it yet, and that's the energy stored. But that's just plug and chug. Okay, once you know all this, you can calculate anything regarding the circuit. And so in the homework for chapter 26, you have a bunch of these circuits where you have to solve them. And th really, this is the process you want to use. Any place in the circuit where you can reduce things, reduce them. Questions? Anything confusing about what I did? Um, I got a little lost when you went through the, from the five, from the 10 and the two fives. Okay, let me go back. We went from the single capacitor into the ones that are in series. Uh, okay. Here? At uh, 10? No, the one, but, well, the one after that. Okay. Actually, maybe it was the 10, because I think I mixed up the um, microcoulombs thing. Okay, let me go back. Well, let's go back to this place, right? So that five microfarad capacitor that you see on the right, that replaced mm -hmm. two 10 microfarad capacitors. That was the first one I did, right? Yeah. So those two capacitors are in series. And so capacitors that are in series have to have the same charge on them. So each one of them has 10 micro coulombs of charge on them. Wait, but they're in parallel, I thought. No, these were these oh, are the, in the ones before. Yeah, the ones before were in series. Yeah, yeah, these are in series. So each one of them is going to have 10 microcoulombs. Okay. And so if you take the 10 microcoulombs divided by the 10 microfarads, you get the voltage across each one. Uh, okay, all right. And okay. the sum of them two, the sum of the two voltages, has to be equal to 2 volts, which it does, right? Because each one is at 1 volt. Yeah. Because when, when you have capacitors in series, the voltages add. When you have capacitors in parallel, the voltages are the same. It's the char when you have capacitors in parallel, the charges add. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. Sure. I didn't go up on the board and do all the work on the board because um, I try to do one where I can pick simple numbers as much as possible, although we still had to do one or two calculations. Okay. So anyway, what I was saying is that you, you know everything that needs to be known in the circuit. The only thing missing is if you want to calculate energy, but if I wanted to calculate the energy stored in any of these capacitors, it's going to be based on the numbers you see on the screen. So I don't have to do any more work other than plugging, plugging and chugging. 
Well, I guess now is a good time to talk about the energy stored in the capacitor. Okay, so let's do that. When you, when you charge a capacitor, energy stored by the field in between the plates. I'm always going to refer to a capacitor as a parallel plate capacitor. Not all capacitors have are parallel plate. Okay, I, I, you know, I did a couple of examples today where the capacitors were parallel plate, but generally the design of practical capacitors, even like this one that you see, that's rolled up, it's just basically two. If I unravel one of these rolls, it's just two parallel plate, it's just a parallel plate capacitor. What happens when, we, when a battery is connected to a parallel plate capacitor? That's my question. Oops. One second. So let's let's look at this. Um, in the following way. Let's say a DQ moves here. A very small amount of charge moves there. Since there was no field initially, then there was, initially there was no field between the plates, no work is required to put that first charge there. But once that DQ has gone up there, now you have a field. And the battery has to do work against that field to put the next charges on it. Okay. How much work is required by the battery to add the next charge? So we say, okay, well, the DW is going to be the work per unit charge delta V times DQ. Okay, we want to know how much work is required to fully charge this thing. The delta V between the plates changes as the charges start to accumulate, and they will accumulate until the delta V here matches the battery voltage. Well, delta V is Q over C. Remember, this is the work done by the battery. This is the work done by something external to the system. And so what's going to happen is that energy is going to be stored. So the work then is going to be this integral from 0 to some capital Q. I'll, I'll use capital Q so I don't have to use dummy variables. This thing is easy to integrate. Q dQ, the integral Q dQ is what? Q squared over 2. So the work that's done on the capacitor by the battery is Q squared over 2C. But if we use the equation, assuming all values are positive here, then I can rewrite this in different ways. For example, I can eliminate the Q
I can eliminate the Q using that equation. Or I can e eliminate the C using that equation. What's interesting is that one half that's there. There's that one half there. I mean, really, the battery itself, this is the work done by the battery on the capacitor. But what's the total work done by the, the, the capacitor, the, the battery? Well, it charges, it moves a, a bunch of charge Q through a potential difference delta V. That's the total work done by the battery. Why is this number twice that number? Because it's for both sides of the capacitor? That's a good guess, but I mean, when we're writing the Q's here, I mean, the delta V re is reflective of the delta V, the potential difference across this. The C here is reflective of the Q over delta V. I'm okay. And, and, and the reason why it's a half is because the wires have resistance in them. The, the wires cause energy to be lost. So half the energy goes into charging the capacitor, and the other half goes into the resistance of the wire. And we're going to talk more about that in the next chapter. So the wires cause you to lose energy. It's kind of like having friction. So this work done by the battery on the capacitor becomes stored energy. And so this is the energy stored in the capacitor. Now, let's do this for a parallel plate. Let's take a look at this equation here. And let's calculate it for a parallel plate capacitor. So for a parallel plate capacitor, we have Q squared over 2C. So we can write this as sigma times A squared. Capacitance is epsilon naught A over D for parallel plate capacitor. Now, again, we're assuming the, the plate dimensions are much, much greater than the plate separation. Uh, what, is, what is this going to give me? Let's see. Sigma squared, one of the A's cancel. There's a D, and I forgot a two here. Okay. Um, remember that the electric field between the plates was sigma over epsilon naught. And uh, sigma squared, or sigma, is equal to So let me put this over here. So this is the energy stored in a parallel plate capacitor written in terms of the electric field. So the energy stored depends on the electric field squared. And then times this A times D. What does this represent? All right, if I have two plates separated by... the area of the plate? Yeah, A is the area of the plate, and then 
What's eight times D? Is that the full air, like the volume? Yeah, this is the, the volume. So eight. So this is the volume between the plates. So we can say that the energy stored is given by that expression. Furthermore, we can define something called the energy per unit volume. The energy per unit volume is just going to be big U over V. Now, I've done this for parallel plates, but this definition is for uh, this expression for energy density. This expression for energy density is valid for any geometry, not just the parallel plate one. Of course, I would have to use methods of Calc 3 to actually prove that to you. So I'm going to assume you're going to believe me that this expression is true in general. And we use a little u to write this. So little u is the energy density. Big U is the total energy. So this is true in general so that the energy itself is the integral of little u over the volume. And this integral is integrated over the volume in which E is valid. Okay, you integrate it over the volume in which E is val valid. So, I mean, what we've shown here is that capacitors store energy and electric fields store energy, just like the gravitational fields store energy. And we've written U in terms of an energy density. And, I, and again, I haven't been rigorous in deriving this. That's okay for our class. Okay. When you take a junior level class, you'll derive it using the methods of Calc 3. It's actually not a bad derivation. It's just we haven't had Calc 3. Okay. So let's talk about energy some more with the capacitor. I'm going I'm to go back and go with the example with the parallel plate capacitor. Suppose we charge a parallel plate capacitor and then we disconnect the battery. Okay, so let's see, I want, I'm trying to keep all my equations here. Go here. I charge it up and I disconnected the battery, and I'm going to increase the plate separation. What happens? What happens to the stored energy? What happens to you if I increase the plate separation? Here's my equation. And I kind of answered this question a little bit earlier. I don't know if you remember. What happens to the capacitance if I increase the plate separation? 
charging the prices. Hey, what? Uh, the charge stays the same, sorry. The charge stays the same, and what happened to C? C goes down. C goes down, so there's more energy in between the plates. Yeah. And where did the energy come from? It came from me increasing the plate separation. The work. Oh, yeah, the work that I did. Mm -hmm. And separating the plates, okay? Get stored as energy. Should also try to a answer that question, assuming that the battery's still connected, see what you get. So I want to use this to calculate the energy stored in a conducting sphere and I want to use it to derive the capacitance of the sphere. In fact, I showed you earlier today that the capacitance for a sphere was given by this expression. That was easy to do. I want to derive the capacitance using this equation and this equation. Sorry, that equation. Okay. Because this one's just very general. This one, this one's specific to the parallel plate. Okay. I have a spherical capacitor. Meaning I have a, a sphere with charge Q on it in radius R. The electric field out here is gonna be K Q over R squared. The other conductor, the other, the other conductor of this capacitor has an infinite radius and the opposite charge minus Q. Okay, I can think of it that way. So I want to find the capacitance of the system. And I want to use this equation. Professor? Yeah. What is the little r in this scenario? Because big R is the radius. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the electric field outside the, the conductor. Okay. So, my, my, so this is a sphere of radius r. The other sphere of my two conducting capacitor is, has an infinite radius. Okay, it's an opposite charge of this one. So V is zero for the outer one, okay? Okay. So I want to I want to calculate this integral. I want to integrate one half epsilon naught times this field squared How do I write volume element? So I'm I'm, I'm integrating over a big I'm in, integrating over a very big sphere. I'm integrating the electric field where? Over the region in which the expression for the electric field is valid. Where is this expression is valid? Well, it's valid from the surface of the field, the surface of the conductor, all the way out to infinity. This electric field is valid outside the sphere all the way up to infinity. And so I'm integrating over that region. And my volume is just a bunch of spherical shells of surface area, 4 pi r squared, and thickness dr. OK, I got a lot of math here. Uh, let's see, k squared. Q squared. I have R to the fourth, and then that R cancels. And then there's a 4 pi. So I'm integrating 1 over R squared. What is that, what's the integral of 1 over R squared? It's 
Negative one over R, right? Negative one over R, okay. When I evaluate at an infinity, what does this give me? Zero. So then I get u equal, and so, and so then the minus signs, I have too many minus signs here. When I evaluate this, the minus signs will cancel, right? Oops. Check my algebra. There's a reason why I'm keeping the four and the two there. Did I do my algebra okay? Oh, what's four pi epsilon naught? Isn't that like one over k? Yeah, so it's one over k, so let me rewrite it. That helps. So it's kq squared over 2r. And that's equal to q squared over 2c. So the q squares cancel. The 2s cancel. And so that gives me c equals r over k. So it gives me the capacitance of the system. Now, this, is, this took me way longer to get that expression. However, there are certain scenarios where using the other method I showed you earlier is hard, but using this one is not. And so it's good to be able to do it both ways. So I was able to calculate the capacitance from the energy. Questions? Okay. So, I want to talk about charge sharing of capacitors. I want to do one example above in charge sharing with professor. Capacitors. Yeah. Um, why did you subtract the q squared over two c? I didn't. Sub I didn't subtract it. I set it equal. Oh, they're to. equal. Oh. Yeah. So I can. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So you can you can solve for C. Yeah, it's basically this this right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose I have two capacitors. And I mention this because of the problems that we have and you'll see these problems come up in the book. I have one capacitor that I charge at 2 kilovolts, it's 200 picofarads. And I have a second one, I do the same thing with it. And I disconnect them from the battery and I connect them to each other. So I, I disconnect them from the battery and then I connect them to each other. Such that this positive terminal is connected to this positive terminal, and this negative terminal is connected to that negative terminal. What's the final voltage of the system?
What's the final voltage of this system? What's the potential difference across this guy? And what's the potential difference across this guy? That's my question. Well, let's see. Let's pretend, let's pretend that this is at 2,000, 2000 volts. This is at ground. This is at 2,000 volts. And this is at ground. So I'm taking this guy that's at 2,000 volts, and I connect it to this guy that's at 2,000 volts. Then I take this one that's at 0 volts, and I also connect it to this one that's at 0 volts. What's the final voltage across this guy and this guy? The answer should be easy. You don't have to do any calculation. Should be zero? No, no, I mean or, I mean the same. This is at two thousand. Right? Mm hmm I can I, I connect a plate that's a two thousand volt to another plate that's at two thousand volts. So I have two plates here. Well, two, right? Well they're in series, so that would just make it four thousand or one over four thousand, right? They're in or am I series. mixing my calculations? How, how do you know they're in series? Because they, oh, well, I guess they're not in series because the positives are on the same side. Yeah, the positives are on the same side. In fact, I have, this is a 2000 and this is a 2000. What do we say about charge sharing earlier today? With the two spheres. Charge will flow until both of them are at the same potential, right? That's right, yeah. So if this plate and this plate are at the same potential, are they, is charge going to flow? No. No. So this is still going to stay at 2,000 volts. Okay, all right. And then this and this are still are at the same potential. So this is going to be at zero volts. So both capacitors, they're actually in parallel, right? The delta V is still yeah. 2,000 volts. Mm -hmm. So they're both at 2,000 volts, right? Yeah. So the delta V of the final system is still 2,000 volts. Yeah. In fact, nothing happens. No charge flows when I connect this, nothing. So if I wanted to calculate how much energy I had here and how much energy I had here, it's going to be the same as the amount of energy I had here. Nothing changed. Okay, whatever charge was on this capacitor here will be the charge that was on this that's on this capacitor here. Okay, because no charge will flow because these plates have always been at the same potential. These plates have always been at the same potential. So nothing's going to happen. But what if I do this? I take the positive of this plate and connect it to the negative of that plate. And then I take the negative of this plate and connect it to the positive of this plate. Then what? Now you have two conductors here that are at different potentials, charge will flow. And you'll have two conductors here that are different potentials, charge will flow. How long will they flow? Until these two are the same potential and these two are the same potential. Because the potential across them is going to be different. Okay, so you're going to have a final delta V. It's not going to be 2,000 volts, it'll be something else. And we got to figure that out. That's why, that's why the charge sharing problem I did earlier is very important. Okay, because it, it, it relates to these kind of problems, and you see them in the book. And some of the ones in the books are, per, are pretty complicated. So let's, let's say I, I connect one po po positive to negative. Okay. In order for me to do that, I actually got to do some calculations because I know, I know things are going to change because charge will flow between the plates when I connect this plate to that plate and this plate 
to this plate of the capacitor. I mean, physically, I can easily do that. One could illustrate that. With something like this, I can tell one of these two is made out of copper and the other one isn't because the one on my, on my left is really heavy. The one on my right is really light. Anyway, I can, do, I can do something like that with these two. Okay. Um, let's calculate the amount of charge on this one. Let's call this capacitor 1. Let's call this capacitor 2. So Q1 initial is going to be 200 times 2,000 picofarads. So I got to do some math here. Q1 initial is going to be Q2 initial is going to be 2,000. I guess that's too light, sorry. Is that too light? Yeah, I okay. can't see it. All right, sorry. Let me rewrite it then. That's how much charge is on each one of the plates. So this is the amount of charge initially on this plate and this plate, obviously opposite signs. This is the amount of charge initially on this plate and this plate, of course, opposite, opposite signs on the two plates. If I connect this plate to that plate, then the total charge I'm going to have between those two plates is going to be the difference between these two guys. Same thing with the charge sharing. And the reason why it's a difference, because this is positive, that's negative. Does that make sense? Same thing for the other two. If I connect this to this, the total charge together is going to be the difference between these two, because one is positive and one is negative. So Q total, and any, any pairs now that I've connected together, is going to be this. Would it essentially be absolute value because it's... Yeah, I'm writing it so it's positive. Either way. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're, you're like right. like it doesn't matter either way, right? Just so long as it's... Yeah, because one's, they're going to be opposites of each other. You're right about that. All right. Okay, so this comes out to be 1.2 microcoulombs. That's Q total. Charge will flow until the potential across these two are the same and the potential across these two are the same. Okay? And the total charge I'm going to have is the total charge on here plus the total charge on here. And they're in parallel. C 
So, I'll put this down here. I have 1.2 microcoulombs is equal to C1 plus C2 delta V. This is the final voltage across any one of those two capacitors. So delta V And this comes out to, I think it's 1,200 volts. Hold on a second. Yeah, it's 1,200 volts. So each one of these capacitors now has 1,200 volts across them. Just by doing that. Of course, this is an idealized problem because when I disconnect them and then connect them again, somewhere charge will be lost. But I'm assuming that for the purposes of simplicity, no energy is lost. Okay. Um, so I know the final potential on a place, and then I can figure out the Q final because Q final. I'm sorry, uh, Q1 final would be 1,200 volts times 200 picofarads. And Q2 final is 1,200 volts times 800 picofarads. Okay. Basically, this is going to be 80% of that number. This should be... That's what you should get. The sum of those two will give you 1.2 microcoulombs. What happens to the energy? My last question of the day is, what happens to the energy? The energy before and the energy after. Okay. How much energy did I have before? The total energy of the two capacitors combined. Okay. What was my initial energy of the two capacitors combined? Well, I'm going to write it in terms of C delta V. Since they're both at the same potential, that's how much energy I had before. And I do have mixed units. So this is before. What's U final? Well, it's each one of those capacitors is at 1,200 volts. Okay. What is 
And I'm going to get rid of the slide so you can, I can show you everything. Hold on a second. Because I'm running out of space and time. Oops. OK, so I want to find u final, u initial. If you do the math on the calculator with the right conversion of units, that much energy is lost in the process. Why do we lose energy? That's a hard question. Why do we lose energy? Because the electrons have to flow through a wire. The wires have resistance and the wires remove energy from the system. That's why. Okay. So you, when you look in chapter 26 of the book, you will see uh, problems in the book where you, where you do chart sharing. And they help you to understand uh, really what's going on in the capacitor. That's, what, that's the reason why these problems are important. Do you folks have any questions? I think I'm good. So I've pretty much covered most of chapter 20. I have one more topic in chapter 26 to cover. It has to do with dielectrics. That'll probably take me half the lecture, maybe less than half the lecture on Tuesday. And then I'll do chapter 27, which will take me about 20 minutes because we covered a lot of it already. OK? So I hope to see you, some of you, on Thursday evening. By the way, if um, you haven't had a physics lab at Sierra College, I'd like to speak to you after the exam on uh, Friday, if you, can, if you can stick around, OK? OK. Just so you get used to, because I want to get you familiarized with how we do things uh, in our department. All right, I'll